to present my dear colleague, the king of the thyroid of our department, the endocrinological department, Professor Tamir Sherbini, who was one of the eminent uh, speaker, who will speak about the hypothyroidism and pregnancy. He also the vice president of the uh, uh, Alexandria Thyroid Association, and it is actually the the active member of this association. Uh, please, dear Professor Tamir. Okay, so. Um... Um, my presentation, we have listened to uh, uh, lectures about screening. We have uh, listened to lectures about uh, infertility. And we also have heard lectures about what's going to happen about, uh, after having or after delivering uh, a child. So what remains is to talk about uh, hypothyroidism uh, during pregnancy. As you can see, my uh, uh, my first slide. I have borrowed this from uh, this uh, this paper with Alex Stagnaro Green. Alex Stagnaro Green was the head uh, of the committee that wrote the guidelines of the American Thyroid Association in 2011. And in this paper in 2015, he pictured uh, the thyroid uh, during pregnancy as performing a stress test. So the idea. Here is to picture the thyroid or the, the period of pregnancy as a stress test for the thyroid. So if our thyroid is requested to work with a 100% efficiency during normal conditions, it is required to work with 150% efficiency during pregnancy. So this picture conveys the main idea that I'm going to discuss through the presentation that pregnancy is a state of increased requirements. And because of this increased requirement, pregnant women with hypothyroidism need to increase their replacement doses. And those who would be diagnosed for the first time during pregnancy, they would require higher requirements and they would require uh, a more fast and a more vigilant uh, titration of their doses. So I'm going to uh, uh, go through the, my presentation uh, viewing three case scenarios. And these case scenarios is going to highlight how to manage hypothyroidism during pregnancy. So the first case is, is, is that of a female, 28 years of age. She's known hypothyroid for the last five years. She has Hashimoto thyroiditis. Her last pre-pregnancy TSH is 1.8 million international unit per liter, which, was, which is well controlled. She was on label thyroxine 100 micrograms per day before getting pregnant. She had this pregnancy test that was positive. And so how should this patient or how should her physician uh, manage the thyroxine therapy? So going back to the guidelines, the most recent guidelines that was released by the uh, American Thyroid Association, this was in 2017. Uh, actually, uh, Dr. Elizabeth Pierce co-chaired the committee that wrote these guidelines. And in 2017, American Thyroid Association recommended that in hypothyroid patients receiving levothyroxine who had a confirmed or suspected pregnancy, he, she, the, the, the pregnant woman should independently increase the dose of levothyroxine by a range of 20 to 30 percent. And they have suggested uh, a protocol for doing this. And so they have suggested that she may administer two additional tablets weekly to the patient current daily uh, levothyroxine dose. This was a strong recommendation coming from a high quality evidence. So she should increase two additional doses per week to her 100 micrograms per day that she is already in. The next question to be asked, what would be the target TSH during gestation? And so again, American Thyroid Association recommended that a TSH in the lower half of trimester specific reference range should be used. In case that we don't have a trimester specific reference range, then I should aim to TSH below 2.5. And they have just justified this uh, recommendation that this is parallel to the treatment of hypothyroidism in general population. So if you look at the right, the European Thyroid Association have recommended that 
hypothyroid women who have been treated for hypothyroidism, the aim for TSH in most adults should be to reach a stable TSH in the lower half of the reference range. So even for a non-pregnant woman who is hypothyroid and she has been treated for hypothyroidism, I should aim for a TSH that is lower than 2.5. And again, the European Thyroid Association in 2014, they recommended that women with hypothyroidism and those with overt hypothyroidism desiring pregnancy should take levothyroxine in a dose to ensure a TSH level less than 2.5. So actually, when you start treatment, a patient, as to, as when you start treating a woman for hypothyroidism, whether this is overt hypothyroidism or some clinical hypothyroidism, the, the number 2.5 comes in every possible situation. So if she is not desiring pregnancy, you should target the lower half of normal range that is less than 2.5. If she is desiring pregnancy, you should target TSH less than 2.5. And when she gets pregnant, you should modify the dose again to target a TSH that is less than 2.5. So actually, you just have to memorize for a woman who is on treatment for levothyroxine for having hypothyroidism, whether this is subclinical or overt hypothyroidism, always remember the target TSH of less than 2.5. So how many hypothyroid women would require increasing their dose during pregnancy? So actually, between 50 and 85% of levothyroxine-treated hypothyroid patients would need to increase the exogenous levothyroxine dosing during pregnancy. So it is not universal. So some women will not require. So do we have uh, some descriptive studies for, for this observation? So these are recent data coming from an Eastern population. So this, uh, this study was performed in Iran and they have included 81 pregnancies. They were all well controlled before pregnancy. They all had their TSH less than 2.5 million international unit per liter. And they have observed that the label cyroxine dose needed to be increased in 84%. The label cyroxine dose was decreased in 7% and no adjustment was made in about 9%. And this is consistent with the statement that I have quoted from the American Thyroid Association. So why there is need to increase the levothyroxine dose during pregnancy? In, in other terms, why are there, there is increased requirement for thyroxine during pregnancy? Why there is need to increase or to increment levothyroxine dose during pregnancy in hypothyroid treated women when they get pregnant? Initially, in the early pregnancy, there is increased estrogen. The increased estrogen increases, number one, senses, and number two, it decreases the clearance of thyroid binding globulin. And so this would lead to increased serum uh, hormone binding capacity of the TBG and an expansion of the extracyroidal thyroid hormone pool. Again, there is an increase in maternal plasma volume that occurs early in pregnancy and continues up to the time of delivery. So we have an increase in thyroid binding globulin. We have an increase in the uh, uh, plasma volume and both of which would increase the need to either synthesize or to supplement levothyroxine during pregnancy, and this is responsible for the initial increase of requirement. Later in pregnancy, the need for increased hormonal production is maintained by another two mechanisms. The first mechanism is increased preferred metabolism of T4 by type 3 deiodinase, which is expressed by the developing placenta. Actually, the rule of D3 or type 3 deiodinase is to protect the fetal circulation from excessive concentrations of levothyrox. Also, there is transplacental passage of T4 to the fetus. Actually, the fetus is fully dependent on maternal levothyroxine for the first half of pregnancy, and it is partially dependent on maternal levothyroxine for the remaining time of pregnancy. And so some part of the produced uh, uh, thyroxine would cross the placenta and go to the fetus to fulfill its needs. Uh, and lastly, there is increased maternal renal clearance of thyroid hormones. So these are five explanations as to how do we need, uh, why do we need to increase the dose of levothyroxine in a pregnant woman achieving pregnancy.
And the American Thyroid Association also mentioned that this increase largely depends on two factors. The first one is etiology of hypothyroidism, and the second one is the preconception levels of TSH. Actually, the etiology of hypothyroidism can be mentioned in another term, so we can uh, use other words, and we can call it thyroid functional reserve. And I'm going to explain this in this slide. So the different etiologies that were studied in literature were these four etiologies. The first etiology is subclinical hypothyroidism. Subclinical hypothyroidism can be mentioned in other words as mild thyroid failure. Theoretically, subclinical hypothyroidism is a patient that has a uh, 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 much uh, uh, thyroid functional reserve in his thyroid still remaining. The second category was overt hypothyroidism due to Hashimoto thyroiditis. Patients who have hypothyroidism, overt hypothyroidism due to Hashimoto thyroiditis, they still have some functioning thyroid cells. And so, so they have some functional thyroid reserve. While overt hypothyroidism due to thyroid ablation, and we refer to thyroid ablation as those who had undergone thyroidectomy, total thyroidectomy, or radioactive iodine ablation. In these patients, they do not have any thyroid functional reserve. So this is the difference between having overt hypothyroidism due to Hashimoto thyroiditis and overt hypothyroidism due to thyroid ablation. And the fourth etiology or the fourth category here would be cancer thyroid. Those who had undergone total thyroidectomy plus or minus radioactive iodine ablation, these patients differ in their management because they require TSH to be suppressed. And so these are the different four etiologies that they have discussed. And so I'm going to make some comparisons between different reasons. So you would know that how would etiology of hypothyroidism affect the percentage or the increased need that we have to give for these patients. So you can see here in this study by Kaplan, he studied 42 pregnancies. At this time, the target TSH to maintain during pregnancy was less than 4 milli international units per liter. He compared 17 Hashimoto thyroiditis patients versus 25 ablative hypothyroid patients, and they have observed that. For those with ablative hypothyroidism, 76% of these patients had a TSH elevation, while for Hashimoto thyroiditis, only half of the patients had a TSH elevation when they got pregnant. The ablative hypothyroidism had an increase in their TSH reaching up to 14 milli international unit per liter, while Hashimoto thyroiditis patient that had an elevation of the TSH, it rose only up to 7 milli international unit per liter. And they also have estimated and calculated the increased requirement that would be needed to achieve eothyroidism. And so they have found that for ablative hypothyroidism, you would have to add 0.5 micrograms per kg per day to reach eothyroidism. While for, high, for Hashimoto thyroiditis, you would only require 0.23 micrograms per kg per day to reach eothyroidism during pregnancy. So much higher percentage had an elevation of the TSH. They had this elevation to higher levels and they would require higher requirement to achieve eothyroidism during pregnancy. And so if you have very little or no thyroid functional reserve, you would have a problem during pregnancy. Again, another study, again, uh, uh, comparing between Hashimoto thyroiditis and ablative hypothyroidism. Again, the target was to achieve TSH below than four. And you can see that for patients with Hashimoto thyroiditis, they only required 16% increase in the levothyroxine dose, while for ablative hypothyroidism, they required to increase the dose by 45%. A third study, the same comparison, Hashimoto thyroiditis versus ablative hypothyroidism. Here, the main difference would be that the target to achieve was a TSH less than 2.5. And as you can see here for Hashimoto thyroiditis, they required an increment of 45%, while for ablative hypothyroidism, they required an increment of almost 50%. The three studies, the three studies demonstrate that ablative hypothyroidism always requires a higher increment in levothyroxine dose. And if you are 
aiming for TSH that is low, less than 2.5, even Hashimoto thyroiditis would have uh, comparable increments. The other comparison would be subclinical versus overt hypothyroidism. So if you can see here, we are comparing 76 subclinical versus 50 overt hypothyroid patients. Again, the target was TSH less than 2.5. And you would be surprised to know that subclinical hypothyroidism would need a 70% increase in the levothyroxine dose, while overt hypothyroid patients only require 45% increase in the levothyroxine dose. The authors of this, uh, uh, of this uh, study, they have uh, explained the much higher requirement for increase for, post, for patients with subclinical hypothyroidism. They, they figured that subclinical hypothyroidism is usually undertreated in patients who desire fertility. And that is why when they develop their pregnancy, the increased requirement or the increased demand requires them to increase the dose even to a higher extent compared to overt hypothyroidism. Again, a much smaller group, only 14 subclinically hypothyroid patients versus three overtly hypothyroid patients. And they found that subclinical hypothyroid patients required an increase with 34% of the preconception dose, while overtly hypothyroid patients required only an increase in the, in the uh, 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 only of 8% compared to the preconception dose. So although this is a very small number to compare, but it confirmed the idea that subclinical hypothyroidism would require a larger increase in, the, uh, uh, in their levothyroxine doses compared to overt hypothyroidism. And so to summarize the effect of etiology on the increment of levothyroxine during pregnancy, ablative hypothyroidism have a high range of increased requirements. You would require an increase uh, 45 to 50% or uh, a 0.5 micrograms per kg per day. Over hypothyroidism due to Hashimoto thyroiditis has a low range of increased requirement ranging from 16 to 45% according to the target TSH if it is going to be less than 4 or it is going to be less than 2.5 or if you are going to calculate it by microgram per kg per day it is going to be 0.2 micrograms per kg per day. So clinical hypothyroidism have the highest range of increased requirement ranging from 35 to 70% most probably, most probably due to under replacement before conception. The second factor that would affect the amount of increased levothyroxine doses during pregnancy is the preconception TSH. Here we have uh, uh, 53 pregnancies, among which only 17, uh, 17 required an increase in the uh, levothyroxine dose during pregnancy. Uh, all the pregnancies had a preconception serum TSH that is less than 2.5. The target TSH were uh, those recommended by the Endocrine Society in 2007. And when they classified the patient according to preconception TSH, for those who had a TSH uh, ranging from 1.2 to 2.4 milli international unit per liter, 50% of this group required an increment in their levothyroxine dose while those who had a preconception TSH less than 1.2 milli international unit per liter, only 17% of such patients required an increment. So if you have your TSH in the lowest quartile of normal, that is to say less than 1.2 milli international unit per liter, only 20% of the patients would require an increase in the levothyroxine dose. Another way to compare, these patients were either ablative hypothyroidism or thyroid cancer patients. For thyroid cancer patients, most of them, 83% of which they had suppressed TSH of less than, one, uh, of less than uh, 0.1 before the conception, they had a median baseline TSH that is uh, 0.06 before achieving conception. And if you can, if you can see here, the ablative hypothyroidism required an increment of dose of 45%, while those patients, thyroid cancer patients, who had a suppression of their TSH before having the conception, they required only 26% increase. And so, in this, only 20% would require an increase. And when you increase, 
you would require a much smaller increase if you have a suppressed TSH. And so in summary, reconception TSH in the lowest quartile of normal, that is to say 0.3 to 1.2, it decreases the need to increase levothyroxine dose to only one in five, and it decreases the amount of levothyroxine dose increment to 25%. I have shown you the recommendation and they have advised that for a pregnant woman who is hypothyroid on replacement therapy, when she knows that she is pregnant, she should independently increase the dose by two weekly doses. This came from this trial, the therapy trial. They have included 48 patients and group A increased two tablets per week and group B increased three tablets per week. And as you can see, increasing two tablets per week, this equals a 30% increase in the dose of levothyroxine have suppressed the TSH during pregnancy only in 8%, while increasing 3%, that's, that this equals more than 40% increase in the levothyroxine dose have resulted in much higher levels of suppression. The same study was the source of the recommendation of the frequency of testing. How frequent would you test TSH in a pregnant woman on levothyroxine? And so in this study, they have actually measured TSH every two weeks. And they have seen, uh, the, uh, they have sought to, uh, to see the perfect frequency of testing for TSH. They found that if you test the patient every four weeks, this would identify 90% of the abnormal values. While if you test the patient every six weeks, you would identify only 70% of the abnormal values. So that is why this was the recommendation by the American Thyroid Association that you should monitor the TSH every four weeks. And this was a strong recommendation coming from high quality evidence. So back to the patient. The patient was prescribed levothyroxine 100 micrograms per day. This was increased by two tablets per week. And so she received 200 micrograms per day on Thursday and Friday. Four weeks later, the TSH was 3.5. 3.5 is higher than the recommended target. The target should be less than 2.5. How should I titrate the dose of this patient? So in this study, they have tested the efficiency of two uh, titration protocols. The first protocol depends on daily dose. Here you can see that according to the current daily dose and according to the TSH that you are going to titrate your dose. If the patient is receiving less than 125 micrograms per day, according to TSH, if the TSH is 10, you are going to increase 50. If the TSH is 5 to 10, you are going to increase 25. If the patient TSH is 2.5 to 5, you are going to only increase 12.5 micrograms per day. If the TSH is within 0.1 to 2.5, do not change the dose. If the patient is having a suppressed TSH less than 0.1, you are going to decrease 25 micrograms per day. But if the daily dose is greater than 125 micrograms per day, then again, according to the TSH. If the TSH is greater than 10, increase it by 75. If the TSH is 5 to 10, increase it by 50. If the TSH is 2.5 to 5, increase it by 25. No change for TSH from 0.1 to 0.5. If the TSH is suppressed, then decrease it by 50 micrograms per day. The second titration protocol did not depend on the current dose. So regardless of the current levothyroxine dose, if the TSH is more than 10, add three doses per week. If the TSH is five to 10, add two additional doses per week. If the TSH is 2.5 to five, add one additional dose per week. If the TSH is within target, don't change. If the TSH is suppressed, decrease it by two doses per week. If we are going to apply this to our patient, actually I have tested both protocols. So the patient was on nine tablets per week of levothyroxine, uh, 100 micrograms. This would be 
uh, estimated into 128.5 micrograms per day. So if I follow the first rule, the dose should be increased by 25 to become 150 micrograms per day. If I follow the second rule, the dose should be increased by one tablet per week to become 10 tablets per week of 100 micrograms. And this would be calculated into 140 micrograms per week. Either you follow this or this, this patient achieved the desired target as was maintained to the end of pregnancy. So after delivery, how should I manage levothyroxine dose? So the recommendation from the American Thyroid Association is that you should go back to the preconception dose and you should retest your patient within six weeks. This is a strong recommendation with moderate quality of evidence. The second scenario is a patient with subclinical hypothyroidism newly diagnosed during pregnancy. So this is a female of 30 years of age, 70 kilograms of weight, newly diagnosed second pregnancy. On routine investigations, the TSH was 5.2, the free T4 was 1.1, well within the normal range, subclinical hypothyroid patient. She has TBO antibody positive. How should we manage this lady? So first, how should I define hypothyroidism pregnancy? So the American Thyroid Association recommended that in the setting of pregnancy, hypothyroidism is defined as TSH beyond the upper limit of pregnancy specific reference range. So how should I have this pregnancy specific reference range? You have one choice out of three. The first choice is to have an internal pregnancy specific reference range. That is to say, a, 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 pregnant, a, a pregnancy specific reference range that you have developed for your own patients. It has to be population specific, trimester specific, and method specific. And as Dr. Uh, Dr. Elizabeth have mentioned, this should uh, we should include patients in this uh, in, uh, in a new research that are only healthy, TBO negative with optimal iodine intake and with no history of thyroidal illness. If you don't have an internal pregnancy specific reference range, you may go to a transferable. So what is the transferable? You would take this pregnancy specific reference range from similar patient population using the same TSH assays that you use in your institution. In our case, we don't have an internal and we don't have a transferable pregnancy specific reference range. And as Dr. Elizabeth have mentioned, even in her practice, they don't have this internal or transferable uh, uh, specific reference range. And so the upper limit of normal in this case would be four. So this is what we are going to apply for our patients. And then the American Thyroid Association recommended that for a pregnant woman with a TSH more than 2.5, you should acquire the TBO status. Our patient has TBO positive. So when is treatment is recommended? Treatment is recommended in the case of subclinical hypothyroidism, newly diagnosed during pregnancy, if, if you have a TBO positive uh, woman with a TSH greater than four. This applies to our patient, which means that our patient should be treated. If you have a TBO negative woman, but with TSH greater than 10. Treatment may be considered if you have TBO positive with a TSH more than 2.5, but still below the upper limit of normal. If you have a TBO negative uh, uh, woman with TSH 4 to 10, then the treatment is considered. Do not treat a patient who is TBO negative with a normal TSH, that is to say TSH less than 4. Accordingly, our patient should be treated because she has a TSH greater than 4 and she has TBO antibody positive. How should I initiate the dose? Subclinical hypothyroidism developing for the first time during pregnancy. So we have three ways of initiating levothyroxine therapy in such a patient. First, we use an empirical or universal dose. This was tested in Spain in two researches. The first research was conducted in 2012 where they have 68 patients, all subclinically hypothyroid patients, and they gave all the patients 50 micrograms per day. And they have found that this universal dosing, 50 micrograms per day for all subclinically hypothyroid patients, 
did not result in reaching the target of TSH less than 4.5 in 20% of the patients. So two years later, the same group had the same design, including 116 patients. They were all subclinically hypothyroid patients. And this time they gave 75 micrograms per day to all their patients. And they have found that 94% have achieved the target reference range of less than 4.5. So comparing a universal dose of 50 micrograms versus a universal dose of 75 micrograms, this will fail to achieve the target in 20% of the patients for 50, but only in 6% of the patients for 75. So this is the first way to start replacing uh, subclinical hypothyroidism newly diagnosed in pregnancy. Another way is to use the TSH, TSH-based dosing. So in this trial, they have classified, they were all subclinical hypothyroid patients. They all had TSH less than 10, and they have classified the patients according to their TSH 2.5 to 5, 5 to 8, and 8 to 10. And they have given these categories either 50, 75, or 100 micrograms per day. And you can see here that this stratification by TSH achieved the target in 80 to 90% of the patients. One last way to dose uh, or to initiate levothyroxine in subclinically hypothyroid patients is to use both TSH and weight-based dosing. So in this category of patients, they all were TSH less than 10, and then they have classified this into two categories, TSH 2.5 to 4.2 and 4.2 to 10. And they were dosed by their weight, either 1.2 micrograms per kg per day or 1.4 micrograms per kg per day. And you can see that this dosing strategy was successful in 90% of the patients. So back to our patient. If you use the universal dosing, 75 micrograms per day had performed better than 50. If you use the TSH-based dosing, you would give her 75 micrograms per day. If you use the TSH and weight-based dosing, she should receive 100 micrograms per day because she weighs 70 kilograms. Actually, the patient achieved and maintained the target TSH was 100 micrograms per day. So how to manage levothyroxine dose after delivery? In, in, in patients who had uh, hypothyroidism before conception, we have a reference dose. So we can revert back to the preconception dose. But here, we do not have a reference dose. So how should we manage? First, usually what happens for a patient who was uh, diagnosed, newly diagnosed subclinical hypothyroidism during pregnancy, what happens after the pregnancy? So this is a very recent study published this year. They had this 114 women with new onset subclinical hypothyroidism diagnosed during pregnancy, and they have followed these patients for one year postpartum. They found that 75 continued the levothyroxine therapy, while 39 stopped the levothyroxine therapy, 11 of which, that is to say, one third of these patients had to restart levothyroxine therapy because subclinical hypothyroidism re-emerged. Eventually, by the end of the first year, 75% were on treatment and 25% were, uh, uh, were not treated by the end of the first year. The positive predictor of treatment need was TSH more than five at the time of diagnosis. And the negative predictor for the need of treatment was primibarity. So multiparity was a risk factor for requiring treatment for subclinical hypothyroidism after pregnancy. What about the dosing? We have two ways uh, of assessing the dosing. We have this expert opinion, Alex Stagnaroglin in 2015, that have, he has suggested this uh, dosing regimen. If you have subclinical hypothyroidism with thyroid antibody positive, which applies to our patient, then you should give half of the final dose and retest in six weeks. If you have subclinical hypothyroidism diagnosed during pregnancy, which is sub, uh, thyroid antibody negative, according to the last dose. If the last dose is 25 micrograms, discontinue levothyroxine. If the last dose is 50 micrograms, give half, uh, give half the final dose. If the final dose is 75 to 100, give 50. 
if the final dose is more than 100 micrograms, again, give half the final dose. So it is more or less half the final dose, except if the final dose is less than 50, then you should discontinue. This is an expert opinion. We have some retrospective data that was published the last year. They had this 108 uh, subclinical hypothyroid patients diagnosed during pregnancy, and they have classified the patients according to having or not having goiter or TBO antibodies. For those who had goiter or TBO antibodies, they, they have given half of the last dose. But for those who lacked goiter or TBO antibodies, they have given 25% of the last dose. Actually, the dose of levothyroxine was increased in about 40% of these patients. And most of the patients who required an up titration was positive for goiter or TBO antibodies, which suggests that in a patient who has subclinical hypothyroidism with a goiter or TBO antibodies, you may need to give more than half the final dose. The final, the shortest scenario of all is uh, overt hypothyroidism newly diagnosed during pregnancy. So this is a female, 25 years of age, 70 kilograms, newly diagnosed first pregnancy. She has family history of thyroid disease, which means the, she, she has high risk for developing hypothyroidism during pregnancy. That's why she was screened. And the, we found that TSH is 14 and the free T4 is below normal. She was diagnosed with overt hypothyroidism. She was diagnosed of having Hashimoto thyroiditis based on TB antibody bottles. How to manage such a patient? Again, the American Thyroid Association mentioned that overt hypothyroidism is recommended during the pregnancy. And Dr. Elizabeth have viewed the uh, possible uh, adverse events of uh, having overt hypothyroidism without treatment during pregnancy. That's why this patient should receive treatment. How to dose? In this uh, study by Abalovich in 2013, uh, he has tested the amount of uh, levothyroxine required to uh, efficiently replace overt hypothyroidism during pregnancy, and they have come up with this factor, 2.3 micrograms per kg per day. They have observed that this requirement was consistent uh, uh, through the, the three semesters, whether it is first or second or third, and so we are going to use this factor, 2.3 micrograms per kg per day. So that the patient, uh, according to the weight, this patient required 150 micrograms per day. Four weeks later, as recommended by the guidelines, the TSH was 3.5. She was titrated according to Sullivan et al. to 175 micrograms per day that I have shown you. She achieved target TSH and maintained it for the rest of pregnancy. Again, how to manage levothyroxine after delivery. We only have this expert opinion. Again, Alex Tagnaro Green, he has suggested that patients with overt hypothyroidism, uh, I should give two thirds of the final dose and recheck this in six weeks. Again, in retrospective data uh, uh, that was published one year uh, ago, 22 patients with overt hypothyroidism, irrespective of the goiter and irrespective of the TBO status, they were given only half the last dose used during pregnancy. Actually, 64% required up titration, which supports the expert opinion by uh, Alex Tagnaro Green. It is better to get two thirds rather than half. To summarize the whole presentation, pregnancy is a state of increased thyroxine requirement. This requires an increment in levothyroxine doses in treated women and requires prompt initiation at higher doses in newly diagnosed patients. More frequent monitoring and more vigilant titration is required. In newly diagnosed patients, management of levothyroxine treatment after delivery requires further research. Um, you are uh, cordially invited to join us in the virtual Thyro Alex. This is going to be next week. Uh, this is Thursday and Friday, 17th and 18th of December. Um, you can uh, follow uh, the, uh, the latest news and uh, you can have the link to join the, uh, the event uh, through our Facebook page, Alexandria Thyroid Association. And as, uh, as we have mentioned in the, at the start of the webinar, you are all invited to join the Alexandria Thyroid Association. We will be very honored with your uh, participation and thank you all for listening.